Good evening. On behalf of the Greater Menominee Falls Foundation and this year's event sponsors, Uptown, Robin's Nest, Nye's Hardware, and Menominee Properties, welcome to this year's ovation. We are excited about the opportunity to share with you the great work that the foundation has done this past year. To let you know how you can make a difference in your community through the Greater Menominee Falls Foundation. And most importantly, for tonight, to honor our featured guests who have given so much to make Menominee Falls the outstanding community that it is. I'd also like to remind you that our silent auction is open till 7 o'clock. There is a back table in there too, so throughout dinner if you want to go up and check your um, bids that you have in there, please go out there and do it. We also have the restaurant raffle and uh, some board members will be going around to sell them. It's 20 bucks for 20 tickets uh, to get in a great uh, raffle there. So before we start dinner, I'd like to invite Karen Nelson, a member of our Foundation Advisory Council, to lead us in prayer. Gracious God, we gather tonight to give thanks. We lift up a group of exemplary people who have chosen to share their lives with others. Some lead boldly and by example, some contribute quietly and efficiently, all give thanklessly. We are thankful for their commitment to making our community stronger and healthier. We thank them for their everlasting contributions. Ovation, by definition, is a sustained and enthusiastic show of appreciation from an audience, especially by means of applause. Lord, our applause is audible. We are your hands as we applaud the recipients who we honor tonight. Be with our honorees and with us all as we continue to do your work in your world. Bless, O oh Lord, this food to our use and us to thy service, and keep us ever mindful of the needs of others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Karen. Please enjoy your dinner. I'll come back uh, during the dessert course. But I draw your attention to the slide deck. Please uh, review it. These are many of the organizations that receive grants from the foundation this year. So uh, uh, please take a few seconds to get an eye on that. Thank you. The Greater Menominee Falls Foundation is your homegrown, hometown opportunity to invest in the betterment of your community. Menominee Falls has a rich history of civic-minded citizens investing the time and efforts to better our community. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, our village grew from one square mile to 33 square miles. Our community leaders went door to door to raise money to build a hospital that was called Community Memorial Hospital. They also rebuilt the modern YMCA that you have in town and improved our parks. Fast forward to the 90s and the next generation of civic-minded leaders established the Greater Menominee Falls Foundation. Founded and sustained by volunteers, the foundation is a tax-exempt public trust that supports our community in a variety of ways. Through many individual donations, both large and small, investment gains from the foundation endowment, the Greater Menominee Falls funds grants to area nonprofit groups that seek to address the health, safety, cultural, educational and environmental needs of our community. Over 12 of those organizations were spotlighted tonight in our, I just killed it on me. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Timing's everything. The Greater Manami Falls Foundation carries on this tradition of our parents to be caretakers of this great village for the next generation. The brochure at your setting tells a little bit more complete story of who we are and what we do and how the GMFF can help you meet the current long-term giving goals that you have established. We encourage you to consider how the foundation can help you impact the community needs through donations or planned giving through your estate. We also encourage you to check out our website at www.fallsfoundation.org 
for information about our grants and awards. We've also added a QR um, code to your table if you want to scan it in and go from there. We're really getting up into the next age there. <laughs> our foundation is run by a board of volunteer directors, and I'd like to recognize the, those people tonight who so generously commit their time to this worthy organization. So could I have my board members, our board members stand please? I'm not going to start till you stand. They are Sue Carney, Terry Fitzsimmons, Sue Jeskowitz, Rick Cole, Robin Mankey, Sharon Minoni, Mary Jo McGraw, Joe Ellen Mulder, Eric Nelson, Randy Newman, Molly Paulus, Dennis Pollard, Dan Schwinn, and our newest board member, Nicole Davis. Thanks. We'd also like to recognize and welcome our state senator, Dan Canoto. In addition, we are joined by Jeremy Walls, our village president, and our Menominee Falls Fire Chief, Joe Pulvermarker. Thanks, guys, for coming and supporting our event. In the past, we have invited grant winners to attend our event to receive the awards. But over the past few years, with many of the challenges they face, and we moved our event to later in the year, we presented those awards back in April so they could use the money right away. So we've highlighted them on that great program over there. Uh, and while they're not in attendance, they are very important to our community and we have listed them in your program too. Please take a moment to see where your donations are helping our community. This year, due to your generous donations, the GMFF has committed to provide approximately 26,000 in grants to these 12 organizations, local organizations, I will say, we are proud of all the grant recipients and their tireless efforts to help improve and support the citizens of our community. In addition, we continue to support the Village Park re renovation with a $10,000 donation for the next four years. I'd like to also take a minute to recognize those who donate and support to the Greater Menominee Falls Foundation. The supermajority of our donations are from members in our community or outside our community who donate less than $100. This is the bedrock of our foundation and shows the power that pooling many donations can lead meaningful grants to organizations in our community. I want to thank all of you for your past and future support. I'd also like to take time to recognize new members of our Founders Society. The members of our Founders Society have donated $10,000 to help sustain the mission of the Greater Menominee Falls Foundation. I'm sure their names will be familiar to many of you because of their long-standing support of our community. This year, I'm pleased to announce that we've added four new members to the Founders Society. That is pretty extraordinary for us to get four new members in a year. Please stand and be recognized as I mention uh, your name. There are Ken Frakes, Sharon and Joe Minoni. Where are they? There they are. Uh, Melody and Don Hewenfeld. Don. Thank you very much. And Kathy and Jim Hazard. On behalf of the foundation, we are tremendously grateful to all your generous donations supporting the Greater Menominee Falls Committee. So we're going to move on to the raffle time. Where's my raffle people? Awesome. Remind, the uh, silent auction is open till 7.15. Also, please uh, get out there, see all the tables, raise your bids up. Your money goes to a great cause. Is Eric doing the drawing? Is, who's doing the drawing? Oh. Who's doing the drawing? What? Doing the drawing? <laughs> I thought so. Eric? He's not coming, that's why he's waiting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, somehow we thought you were the most honest person. Restaurant Rep A. All right, get your tickets ready. This could take a while to get through all our tickets. Oh, can you read it? 576-49483. Five seven six four nine four eight three. I heard something over there. You can use the mic if you want, Eric. Let's see.
576 49011. 576 49011. There we go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Perfect. And C, 576-49066. There's a lot of tickets to look at. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Congratulations to our winners. Now we're going to give you the opportunity to win some fabulous adventures so that you can make good on so we can make good on these commitments. Jerry Missling will assist us with this year's auction. Please bid early and bid often. All your contributions allow us to contribute to the organizations that make the falls great. Can we have our spotters up? Uh, Dan, Dennis, are you going to okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rick, are you going to spot over there? Yeah. All right, Jerry. Thank you, Randy. Uh, if you can't hear me, consider yourself one of the lucky ones. So as we go through this, but I did get a lot of stuff today about wearing this jacket today. And this jacket has a little history. Um, I went, uh, my wife and I went up to Lamb when they had this big sale where they sell everything. They sell pictures of inside seats, whatever. These were jackets that when they have the legends come up, and they go out at halftime and stuff, they wear these jackets. And they had them for sale. So as the legends are wearing them, that tradition continues to this day, by the way. That's a bad joke. But I reached, when I was there, I reached in the pocket that I might find some money. But I got it and I pulled out this ring. It was in the pocket. It's a Milwaukee Bucks World Championship. And my dad would call this a genuine imitation. So that's enough of that. That's the story of the jacket. The only guy that's dressed better than me is Dick Wozencraft. Wherever his shirt, his shirt is stunning, that's all I know. But uh, we've got three auction items, and uh, I know some people still have their first communion money. It might be a chance to part with some of that. And uh, also, we, I've been on things in the past or told people where it makes a good Christmas gift or a holiday gift or whatever. So you're not you know, buying it just for yourself. Uh, a lot of these have, have other, uh, other people involved. So I'm going to read off the, uh, the the party line, what it is, and then we'll go from there. Uh, the first one is uh, you join Ed and Mary Schlump. Mary's sitting back there. There she is. Uh, for an unforgettable evening on Lake Kesis. Glide across the serene waters on their pontoon boat, enjoying a delightful array of hors d'oeuvres and cocktails, excellently prepared for you, and they've got a lot of experience at that. As the sun sets, a revel in the picturesque views and warm hospitality of your hosts. Because after the cruise, you return for dessert, uh, completing a perfect evening of relaxation and enjoyment. The truth of the matter is, for a few doubloons, you get in a boat with Captain Ahab and his maid Marion. You we run around the lake, um, just driving crazy. And if you make it back to one piece, you head up for some chow and some grog. And at the end of the night, all you want to say is. Yo ho, yo ho. It's a pirate's life for me. Savvy? Is that more like it, really? So, we're going to start out. Uh, they're, they're just wonderful people, a long time. Ed was my uh, journalism teacher in high school. Um, in fact, the only detention I ever got, I got from that show. I should have got more, but he gave me one. But anyway, we're going to start out the bidding. It's for eight people. So, uh, you get to bring, you know, some of us have more than eight friends, but you got to limit it to eight. And uh, we're going to start the bidding out at $250, and we'll go in $25 increments. And once again, it's eight people. You divide that. I'm not a math major, but a lot of you guys can figure that out. Uh, so we'll start at $250. If I can get a bid for $250, Dan, you got one? Back there. All right, thank you. We got $250 back in the corner. So now we're looking for $275. We get $275, $275 from Mr. Paulus. Uh, that would make it $300 if my math is right, right? Back here, $300. So 300 gets divided by eight. It's a beautiful evening. They get to pick when they want to go, right, Mary? Within reason? Yep, yeah, okay. So we got, we're at 
300, right? Yes, we're at 300. So can I get 320, what, 325 back in the corner? Uh, 325, a little bit more, 350 we can look for. It's definitely worth 350. Got 350 here, okay, now. We got two people involved right now, so on this half of the room, we're gonna cheer for that person, this half we're gonna cheer for that person. So, let's have some cheers for that one right now. Come on, cheer for that lady here. Come on, there we go. Can we cheer for this gal back here? All right, so right now we're at 325. Can we get 350? Cheer. Oh, 350, there we go. 375, cheer. Oh, Todd, 375. Middle people gotta cheer. Yeah, 375. Can we get 400? 400 for a good cause, for a great evening with good company. 400 right there. Come on, folks. Come on. Tim, say something. Tim, you're always talking. Say something. All right. So we're at 400 over here. 400 over here. 425. Doesn't see 425. Yeah. These people get the hang of it over here. 425. Hey, Todd, you scratching your face here. You got the. All right. 425. Can we get 450? Can we please get 450? 450 right here. That's here right for. All right. We got 450 over here. So 475 be the next number. We've got two at 475. 475 over there. Thank you. And I, if we got 500, it would be fan. 500 we got over here. Thank you very much. 500. Now there's no reason to stop there. You know this is a great. Mary said worth more than 500. Absolutely, Mary says. So that's good. Can we get five and a quarter? Five and a quarter for eight people. Beautiful night, hors d'oeuvres, drinks, pontoon right, and lots of excitement. 525. You know, 525, right? right? Or you 500. See, I lose track all the time. 525. 525, thank you, man. I told you at the table, right? He's good. Uh, 525, can we get 550? 550. Chris Forrest, anyone? Oh, 550, Todd Paulus. Chris Forrest, I think, wants to go over. He wants to go as a guest. Oh, this a host. So we got 550. Can we get more than 550? Oh, Eric, don't scratch your head like that. You threw me off. <laughs> Can we get more than 550? 550, and we want to thank everyone for getting it up. Five goes 550 once, 550 twice. Todd needs six new friends. Congratulations, Todd and Mary Paul. $550, thank you. I want to thank you too, too, for helping out there. I really appreciate it. And the cheering section over here is good. Oh, yeah. Especially Jim Dieter. He's just, uh, we've got to keep him sitting down, though. Uh, so uh, the next one is uh, it's kind of different. Uh, you join your host. Am I talking too loud? I feel like I'm yelling at this. Okay. Yes. What? <laughs> Not too loud, too long. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, it says, join your host, Scott and David, at your historic turn of the century home in Menominee Falls for dinner and a stroll down memory lane. The five course sit down meal will consist of savory and sweet appetizers, entrees, and desserts pulled from the menu of Al Lohman's Steakhouse, circa 1971. Right, we'll stop right there. How, let's have a show of hands of, thank you. Let's have a show of hands of people that went to Al Lohman's Steakhouse at one time in your life. Yeah, so we know how good that's going to be. Uh, Scott is a lifelong resident of Menominee Falls, and David is an avid collector of Menominee Falls memorabilia. I know I going to say that. Uh, throughout the evening, stories will be told, old memories will be shared, and new memories will be created. Period attire uh, would be groovy. Uh, well, you're looking for the 60s here. Uh, if you're slow and climb. But once again, uh, a stroll down memory lane. Al Lomas, I've got some great memories there. I met my first and second wives there. Uh, <laughs> And I got rid of my third one there when I was there, so, uh, so that was a very memorable place. I never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And why, why, why ruin it? But uh, the starting bit is 600, and once again, this is for, I probably missed this, eight people? Eight people. Uh, not including you two, right? Oh. <laughs> All right, so you've got eight people, starting at $600. It's a full course, it's a full evening, and uh, it's something that you know, memories will last a lifetime. And uh, you know, if you're gonna throw food out after that, just give me a call, because I'll take Al Lohman's leftovers if I have to. But, uh, oh, can we get a bid starting out at $600, please? We're gonna have the cinnamon rolls. Oh, cinnamon rolls, oh, all right. All right, can we get a bid for 600 divided by eight people? It's a good, that's a good deal. 
When Todd left the room, I was going, all right, back, that's a hungry woman back there. I'll tell you that right now. We got a bid the, for $600 back in this corner. Dan, what can you do? Can you get anybody over there in that corner? All right. Uh, when it's 625, we get 625. I want to get it's a great night, a memorable night. All right, oh, thank you, 625, right? 625, I appreciate that, thank you. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I get hungry just reading the menu here, you know, so. And it is Al Lohman's, it's, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the inside of the house? You said it's got um, a memorabilia and stuff. You want to give us some idea of that? It's the house I grew up in. It's the house you built? All right. I built 1902. All right, well, that's, that's, oh, that's the menu for that. Okay, great. I know what it is. I actually I sold oh, that. No, you gotta tell these people. Oh, this house is not Park Boulevard. <laughs> right across from Carol Cole, that's why a lot of people have moved. Uh, but uh, but actually I think I sold Packer Raft ticket to you one time, long time ago. Another non winner, but that's a long story. Um, so we got we're at six and a quarter. If we can go six fifty, it'll be just a wonderful night. That was 650, it's getting wonderful already. So 650, it can be more wonderful if we get 675. Uh, 675? Back there, straight back. Right here. Right, oh, Mr. Nye, okay, sounds good. 675, uh, we're at six, that's what we're looking for, that's what we're at. I'm not real good, this is my second time, I'm not real good at this. Let's work. All right, so, thank you, Randy. We're going for 700. 700 would be an all-time record for tonight. Right there. 700. 700. I'm just going to keep my eye on her all night long. I'll tell you right now. Seven, $700. So we're looking for 725. We got 725. Harvey, 725. Thank you. 725, 750 divided by eight. That's less than 100. Sharon over here. 725. Sharon. 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 Thank you. Sharon. That's my new best friend. Right so, so we're at 725. Can we get 750? 750. Thank you. 750. Back to you know we got to get back to the cheering part now. We kind of got away from that. So we're at 750. We got 775. 775. Sharon Harvey. 775. 7, Harvey. 775. Let's have a cheer in the middle. Boy. 775. 800. That's Hi, Sharon, let's get a cheer over there. <laughs> Carol, would you try to control yourself, please, over there? So we're at 800 with Sharon, uh, eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter. That's just a little over 100 apiece. And you're not leaving a tip. Look at it that way. You're going out there and sit there and eat and maybe shoplift a little bit while you're there. Who knows, you know? So, so yeah. I'm so full that I amaze myself sometimes. Uh, but, uh, and Dan Brady. We're looking for 825, according to Mr. Newman. He's just got to ask a businessman. He'll speak. 825 from anyone. We're at Sharon right now, right? Yes, Sharon. We're at Sharon. 825. 825. I'm looking around the middle. Hey, 825. Let's hear it here. Oh, you guys are getting louder and louder. That alcohol is kicking in right now. So we're at 825, and I didn't get your name. Joellen, thank you, Joellen. 825 from Joellen. So uh, going across the room, I'm looking at two or three spots. 850 over there. 850 from Sharon. There we go. 850 from Sharon. Can we get 875? 875. 875, no tipping. Uh, they got alcohol included in this? There's 875 right there. You can skip the meal. I've got friends like that, right, Rick? <laughs> yeah. So 875 includes everything. No tip. Uh, you give rides home? Sure. There we go. You got a ride home. 875. 875 for dinner, drinks, a ride home, and what do you want? Right there. Joellen, all right. 875. Woo! Magic number we're coming up is 900. 900 is a whoa, Sharon. 900. Woo! Oh, here we go. Woo! Woo! No sense of pause at 990, 925. 925, Joellen, it's really worth it. Harvey, are you hungry? <laughs> Harvey will drive you home, by the way. He's one of the guys that will give you right home. 
but we get 925. That's where we're at 900 right now. 925 would be great. 925. Well, we'll go, we'll go 925 once. We'll go nine. Oh, 925. We're, we're at nine. That was pretty weak. 925. Come on. There we go. All right. We're at 925. 925. We're going for 950 now. 1,000. 1,000. Why don't you come up and grab some of these awards and take them back to your seat? Why not? Why, why just sit there? We got a thousand from this good looking, well, well from this guy. Uh, in a friend. Old guy. Old guy. Old guy, what's your name? Chris. Chris. Old guy Chris. Got a thousand dollars. And he's been sitting there all that while. Just sitting there. Now, is somebody going to challenge you? We got two women that are hungry and anxious to help out the Great Menominee Falls Foundation. Can we get a thousand twenty-five from anybody? A thousand twenty-five. Thousand twenty-five. Whoa! Thousand twenty-five from Sharon. Oh, Chris, you did your job. Well, you know, we planted him there just in case. But. Chris, thousand fifty. You're sure? It's only twenty-five dollars. Okay. All right, Joella. Thousand be a thousand fifty. Thousand fifty from the show. I appreciate that. Thousand seventy five. Okay, thank you. Uh, we just made more money. Uh, eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred would be beyond beyond comprehension here. If we get eleven hundred for that night, we're at a thousand seventy five. Thousand seventy five. Well, thousand seventy five once. Eleven hundred dollars back in the corner. Thank you, Sharon. Actually, they'll bring you back two nights for 2200 if you want to do that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so we got 1100 with Sharon back in the corner. 1125 1125 Chris, $1,200. You know, no one cares. Uh, 1125 $1,125 going once. 1150 1150 See, don't be confused. Women can be cutthroats. And we got two of them right here. They are just going back and forth. So 1150 here, 1175. 1175. We'll go 1175. Uh, 1175 once. 1175 twice. Joellen, get ready to have a great night. 1150 for Joellen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Sharon. Appreciate that. Thank you. You got, you got your eight people picked out already? Because well, after this, a bunch of people are going to be nice to you and want to tell you to buy a drink and stuff. Just be careful of those people. Oh, I'm out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to warn you about that. You know, so. All right, we have one left here, and it's something I'm not familiar with. It's, all that's written on here is River Wildlife Pheasant Hunt. And a pheasant hunt, the other auctions I've been at, they're very popular. It's, very, it's a lot of fun for everyone but the pheasants. <laughs> pheasants aren't real happy about, about this prize. So everybody but the pheasants. Now, I'm not a hunter. You know, I'm, I'm good at shooting a bull. I'm good at a shooter now and then. You know, but beyond that, I don't know much about hunting. But people have gone on it and said they just enjoy it. So it's a pheasant. Usually there's a limit, I think. I bet a month where there are like 20 pheasants you got. So, you know, I... Uh, I don't know how we get that many, but uh, anyway, if anybody does do any pheasant hunting around here, they can help us out a little bit. Joella, you do a lot of pheasant hunting? <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, so why don't we start off? Karen, Karen, just, it, you're right, it's, it's 20 birds for four people each. So That's 80 birds? Yeah. Isn't that an endangered species? And they're out there just blowing them away like crazy? Yeah. What animals included? Yeah, Jeff Schultz. All right, let me describe. Robin's husband's going to come up here. I've been there. And Phil is and been, I've, I've shot a few pheasants, and I've been at Kohler. So Jeff is a member of the Kohler Pheasant okay. Hunting Club. It's awesome. It's the best of Wisconsin. So, really? Yeah. Okay, good. 
So the food is phenomenal. Um, Do they clean them then for you? Once? They clean birds. All right. They package the birds. All right. Yeah, it's and phenomenal. And you got to do the cooking. Yeah, you have to cook it. <laughs> All right. Well, so, thank you. I appreciate it. So that. anyway, Herb Kohler moved this uh, hunt lodge from Montana, I believe it is. So, yeah. well, my guess is it's a gorgeous place. It's a gorgeous yeah, setting, gorgeous a, place. Yeah. It's on the, right off the golf course. And you bring four people along a hunt. You probably can bring like wives or or you know family just kind of you know hang around. Uh, whatever. What yeah. I, I'm not sure what you have to describe, but oh, oh, what is sell this? Right? You sell this. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right, now we know more about it. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. All right. Well, you can stick up here if you want. All right, if you want. Um, Rick, what do you think we should start at? I, I know a number you told me, but give me a different number. I know if, if, if four people would go on this, and like Dave said, it's, it's, really, a, it's really a neat thing. I, I heard the story of the, uh, the lodge. Maybe uh, you could probably confirm this. I heard Herb Kohler was out there. He saw this lodge and said, "Boy, I really like, I really like this lodge." He, like, he, he wrote out they were going to give him a room for that night, and he had the lodge moved from. Montana. Yeah, he had the lodge moved from Montana to here. It was oh, Montana. geez, from Montana. Huh? But I know it, it would cost fifteen hundred if you did what, what exactly you're doing here. It, if you're a pheasant hunter at all, it's like the country club of pheasant hunters in Wisconsin, maybe the whole region. And this is one of those gifts that you would maybe give at Christmas or birthdays or anniversary, you know, and uh, you know you don't have to run out next week and go shoot shoot pheasants. But uh, I tell you, the whole experience if you've ever been up in that area, you know how gorgeous that is, and have a, a lodge, whatever. So, um, Rick, you do a lot of hunting, you know? I don't do any hunting. <laughs> you do any fishing? <laughs> well, what do you do? <laughs> All right. Um, you walk your dog. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let, let's start this out. I'd start at least 500. It's it's in corn, right? Right, it's in corn. Almost. Rick says 500 dollars. You know, Rick. Uh, Rick will tell you he knows it all. You know, so uh, just ask him. Um, but anyway, uh, so 500 dollars, 500 dollars for a pheasant up. Uh, there's 80 pheasants. That's like there we go, right off the bat. Eight middle section. Come on. There you go. $500 right off the bat. That guy's, he's a born killer, it looks like. But, uh, and, uh, right next to him. Oh, this could get good. What, 525 right next to him. All right, now we're up at 550. No, 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 600. 600. All right, those, that's what I, all right then. Let's be big boys about this. How about 650? 650. Let's do seven. So let's do seven. All oh, this is. And nobody's cheering. Now we got both sides. Everybody cheer. At 700, let's hear it up for you guys. 700 hours. And he's taking a drink of his coffee. He's talking over. No splitness, you guys. You know, no splitness. <laughs> so we got 700 hours. Anybody, uh, anybody more? Eric, you want to go and shoot a little bit? Uh, 800 for Eric. I'm glad I asked. Eric, thank you so much. Eric, I'm going to embarrass Eric right now. He won $1,000 at the Packer raffle, took second place, donated the money back to the Optimus Club. Thank you, Eric. I told him donate 900 give 100 to me, but he decided to give the whole 1000 back. But, uh, uh, Chief, Paul you want to yeah, get in on the hunt here? I've had souls. I don't... I don't... <laughs> Okay, so Eric, we're going to put uh, 900, Randy? He said 800. 800, 800, thank you. 800, let's go 850. We've got 850. Uh, Nine. 900, oh! We've got, some, we've got some big men out here. 900. Uh, 900, that's, uh, you know, let's go $50. What's $50 among friends? Those are a good cause. 950, 950 for anybody? Right there. 950, I don't have to look. You know, Less and less people are applauding. I think these, we got a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, one of these groups that save the wildlife kind of thing, they don't want to cheer too much. <laughs> one more day, we're thinning the herd. We're thinning the herd. 950, do we get $1,000? Four and uh, four digits, can we get $1,000? You just scratch your head. Well, be careful there. We see those motions, we start, we start throwing out for $1,000. So can we get a thousand? We gotta get a thousand. Somebody, we got one person's gotta give us a thousand. Okay, well let's go 
950 once, 950 twice, 950 two and a half, 950 sold, 950 dollars. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Try to forget I was up here and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, thanks for raising the money. Thanks for all those who participated. I'm sure glad we didn't have 10 items, so we would be here at midnight. <laughs> we will have the silent auction go for five more minutes, so your last chance to run out there and uh, up, uh, update your bid. Um, but now we're going to move on to what we're here for, the most important part of the night. And this is the recognition of these wonderful people in our community. And I'd like to invite Robin Mankey, our foundation secretary, and a winner last year, our winner, an honoree last year of the leadership uh, in Manati Falls. So Robin, the floor is yours. Hi, y'all. Tonight, um, the first award winner is the Patriotism Award. This award will be given to a member of the community who has dedicated service that exemplifies patriotism to our country. This person exhibits the respect and loyalty of this country's greatest treasure, freedom and upholds the belief in the ideals that shaped America. He professes the epitome of Americanism and continually promotes the standards of what it means to be an American. The previous award winners who have received this, the Patriotism Award, are Stan Larson, Bob Otzelberger, who was honored posthumously, John Lukaszewski, Wally Kangas, and Dawn Mariscal. This year's award goes to Raymond Walls. Ray Etzel will come up now and read his nomination of Ray. And then Jeremy Walls, our village president, will present the award. We go way back, and he's always been involved, working hard and working diligently and working intelligently behind the scenes. He would never pu push himself up here, so here I am. So let me introduce for you our friend, Ray Grams. <clears throat> Ray was uh, an only child, born into a Southside family in, in Milwaukee in 1928. When Pearl Harbor was attacked, his parents refused to per permission for him to join the Navy, so he worked in the Merchant Marines. When he turned 18, he joined the Navy because Great Lakes Boot Camp was right down the road in Illinois and the girls liked sailors. So. <laughs> Ray was assigned to a destroyer. Now, in the Navy, they called destroyers tin cans because they're so small. And it, when, when he was in, the, in this destroyer, he, they were hit by a typhoon. The waves on the typhoon were higher than the ship was. And uh, his, his ship survived, but there were other ships that were sunk in this, in this typhoon. So eventually, he was discharged and he joined the Naval Reserves, big mistake, and, <laughs> and prepared for civilian life. This lasted until President Truman began the police action, which developed into the Korean War. 
and Ray was back in the Navy. This time he served on an aircraft carrier. Now, aircraft carriers, big and smooth, and much better, much better do, uh, deal. The aircraft carrier was the Antietam, and they, they served off the uh, coast of Korea, supporting the Army and the Marine Corps. Uh, a civilian at last, Ray became Paul's resident in 1983, and with his wife Sharon, they raised two wonderful children, Sandy and Jim. Besides working at GE Medical, he has volunteered as school receptionist and as school librarian. He is a long-term member of the AMVETS, the VFW, and the American Legion. He served as Legion commander for three years, 10 years as finance officer, 20 years as bar manager, and let me tell you, to this day, he is our auditor and he keeps everybody on, on their toes and on us. So, with all this, I'd like you to introduce my friend, Ray Grants. Check, Phyllis Waters. All right. 
Phyllis Waters, Diane Becker, and my mother, Patsy Bear, for founding Children's Community Center. Harry Stetzel, Vicki Schmidt, Gail Grenier Sweet, Jill Schmidt, Monica, and Jim Getter. This year's Shining Star Award winner is Janine Dietrich. Joy Fricky will read the nomination. Hi, everybody. First of all, I want to tell you that if you do nominate someone, they're going to ask you to speak. So if you don't like speaking so good, pick somebody else to do it for you. Okay, I nominated Janine because I met her when she was the president of the Menominee Falls Optimist Club, which is a great organization. And there's a lot of people in here that are members and past presidents. And I think that was 2018. So she was a great optimist president and she was approached by our village while she was president to consider collaborating with them for the park, our new Menominee Falls beautiful park that we have. So she was instrumental in the Optimist Club helping to get the funding for that. She is a lifelong resident of Menominee Falls. Uh, her husband Dennis could not be here tonight but her two daughters are Erin and Molly and they're both school teachers. And um, for many years, she worked 21 years um, with the Community Memorial Hospital. And you remember Wheeling for Healing, and they had a cancer foundation luncheon. She did all that. She's still very op active in the Optimist Club. And um, she was also a Falls Fest volunteer. Remember when we had Falls Fest? And now she is um, helping with the Downtown Memorial Fest. So I want to introduce you to Janine Diedrich. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you for being here. Congratulations to all of the honorees tonight. And to all of my optimist friends that are here, thank you. I share this award with you. There's many of you here. Um, I have told Joy <laughs> that I do not like to be recognized for my volunteering, but she went ahead and nominated me anyhow, so thanks, Joy. Um, I'm fortunate to come from a family of volunteers, and that's kind of where I got my start. And I've been fortunate to work with organizations and leaders that believe in giving back to the community. And the first was f and Bank, back in the day, now associated. I worked there for 15 years. And then, like Joyce said, I worked for the foundation at Community Memorial for 21 years. Um, but both of those organizations really believe in bringing people together, promoting the community. So that's where I got started. Um, and as an Optimist member, we bring out the best in kids, and I believe in that mission. I was asked to join the club in 2008, and I believe it was 2014 when I was asked to join the board. Then I was the secretary, vice president, and president of the club from 2018 to 2019. And that's when village manager Mark Fitzgerald called me about the park, as Joy mentioned. The board voted unanimously to move forward with this, and we formed an Optimist Foundation. And we began a fundraising campaign in which we raised over a million dollars. I was proud to be on that campaign committee with seven other dedicated Optimist members. And thank you to the Greater Bernominee Falls Foundation for pledging $50,000 towards this campaign. As the gift coordinator for the campaign, I give pledges out to folks, so you're welcome if you got one from me. Um, and I do process all of the gifts. The people I have met in the club are outstanding. Everybody wants to raise funds for the kids in our community, and we have fun doing it. I'm pleased to be on a variety of committees, like speakers with Jerry, um, the scholarship committee with Kathy Hazard. I led the nominating committee, and we had a 50th anniversary party in which I was able to co-chair. I also serve on our foundation board, and am on the club board as a 
um, past president and representative. This has led to me being on the board for the Menominee Falls downtown events the past few years, and I represent the Optimist Club. Uh, we're fortunate in Menominee Falls to have dedicated residents who believe in giving back, and I'm grateful that I can do my part, so thank you again. contributing positively to the quality of community life. Her caring acts and humanitarian activities may be performed individually or in support of an organization's goals. Previous award winners, Leroy Bulo, Bob and Diane Cowan, Russ Noth, Monica Schultz, Rebecca Dombrowicki, Cecilia Valentine, and Carl Horning. This year's Unsung Hero winner is Bonnie Giroux. <laughs> Jenny Shuby will be reading her nomination. Okay, thank you, Robin. And uh, uh, Thank you to the uh, foundation. Um, I'm Jennifer Schuette, and I am the current president of Falls Patio Players, so I do want to just thank you for the um, contributions that you make to our company as well. So, so again, I'm here uh, and honored to speak on behalf of Patio Players uh, tonight in honor of Bonnie Giroux, the winner of the Unsung Hero Award. And I just want to mention that uh, Laura Saletti, who many of you know in this room, actually made the submission on behalf of the Patio Players uh, nominating Bonnie for this award. So uh, she would normally be here, but if you do know Laura, you know that she's a world traveler and she is halfway around the globe somewhere tonight. So um, had she not been traveling, she would be here as well. So to those involved in Patio Players year round, Bonnie is not unsung at all. I feel like that's, I'm talking so loud and I'm getting a reverb here. Okay. So, is that okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, so she has become a fixture in our theater company and many would be hard pressed to not associate Bonnie with their time on a patio player's production. But to our wider audience, they may not know that what Bonnie contributes. To Bonnie, this is just how things should be. She doesn't seek out attention or acclamation for the time that she puts in or all that she has brought to patio players over the years, but we at Patio are very happy to have this occasion to recognize her. Bonnie has worn many hats at patio players. You probably won't find her wearing a costume piece, but everyone who has ever been involved in, patio, in a patio production knows how invaluable she is to the company's success. Bonnie has been our props manager, making sure every scene has whatever item or set piece is required to make our production shine even brighter. She has painted and built sets, assisted with costume changes, and has always done whatever she can to help her fellow crew and the legions of actors over the years have the best experience possible. Many of them are in the room tonight. Um, and I do actually want to just say that Bonnie does lead all of the, the backstage crew activity and such in many, many ways. And many of those people who she's leading in our current production, which is at its final dress rehearsal tonight, are sitting here. So it makes me wonder who is back at the house <laughs> managing the show, right? So let's wrap this up so they can get back to work. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. <laughs> it's true, she says. So it is arguably in her current role as volunteer coordinator where Bonnie has made her most significant impact. Patio Players prides itself on family. 
families participating in our shows, casts and crews becoming close over the run of a production, our captive audiences, and of course, the vast network of volunteers that has formed in the almost 60 years of Falls Patio Players' existence. Bonnie has corralled and mentored a group of volunteers, which has become the envy of Southeastern Wisconsin Community Theater. And she's corralled everyone from ages seven on up. So that's a testament to her abilities right there. So you need someone helping with set changes? Check. You need someone assisting with costume changes? Check. You need someone to paint and build sets? Check, check. You need someone to run the spotlight? Check. Bonnie not only ensures we're able to run the, uh, fill these roles with volunteers, but she also inspires within a group of passion and commitment, which very often results in a lifelong and continued involvement with Falls Patio Players. To Falls Patio Players, family is not the quality of our productions. It is the people who strive and succeed in making the company the very best it can be. Not only in the quality of the shows we produce, but more importantly, in the relationships and experience with which a Falls Patio Players production can afford to the wider community. Bonnie has always been one of our most utmost stewards in that regard and will never truly be able to express our gratitude to her for all of the gifts of time and talent she has given to the Falls Patio Players. An unsung hero is someone who gives a tremendous amount to something and does not receive a lot of attention in return. Bonnie Giroux is the epitome of an unsung hero. But we at Patio Players are so proud to honor her tonight and cannot ever express our gratitude to what she has given to our theater company. More than that, she has been a consummate friend and will always be a beloved member of our Patio family. I welcome Bonnie to the stage. Jennifer was speaking, I uh, received a message from Laura Saletti. She's in Chicago waiting for the bus back to the <laughs> So I mean, she's, she's been one of our great crew members. And yeah, a lot of the crew people are here tonight. Um, while the dress rehearsal's going on, I don't know who's... <laughs> there, there are people there that will replace us for tonight. Which reminds me, I would like to invite you all to come to Patio Players' opening show this weekend called the Church Basement Ladies. It'll be this weekend and next. And if you've, I don't know, there's many times I run into people in town and I tell them about false Patio Players and they go, what's that? Who's that? People don't know and I just, I, I wonder about that because we're going on 60 years. Um, I landed in Menominee Falls in 1967 when Walter Schumann and Winston Brown were the superintendent, super, uh, assistant superintendent, as a second grade teacher. And I taught Menominee Falls for 35 years, so I've been part of the community for, since then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, in, uh, 30 years ago, 31 years ago, one Saturday afternoon, it was kind of raining, and, and I didn't know what to do, but I knew there was something going on at the theater, so I went over. And I went upstairs and ran into Roger Bocek. And he says, what do you want? I said, I, I just want help. And he said, see that pile of sticks over there? I said, yeah. He said, make them into six brooms. We need them for my fair lady. So I sat down with these sticks and I made them. And that's how I, how I started working, doing props and things. Uh, and that was over 30 years ago when I met Amy Sander, that she was one of my painting buddies. That we went, we did everything. We did the props, we did the painting, we did the set, set up, the costume changes, everything. And now it's grown into a, 
We have a great crew of volunteers. Our builders can build absolutely anything, and they do. <laughs> and then we painters, and a lot of the painters are here today, um, say, are sitting there waiting so we can get that done, so we can paint it. And we have a lot of jobs for that. We have somebody who watches the paint dry. I, you know. <laughs> It's just, just, it's just kind of amazing. As, as a prop master, uh, this always comes to my mind. I had to find a plastic champagne bottle because one of the characters gets hit over the head with it in the play. I couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. I went to the phone book. I went down the alphabet and I found the letter P and I went, oh. And then it says, props are us. I found it. So I called, and there was a, a group in West Bend, and I, they said, props are us. And I said, I'm so glad I found you. I'm looking for a plastic champagne bottle so that I can, can have it for a play. And, and the guy was laughing, and he says, we sell boat propellers. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a true story. <laughs> So, and, and as a props person, you have no embarrassment to go into somebody's house and say, are you going to be using that picture on your wall for them? We could use it on our set. Or we need that deer head for over a fireplace or something. And as a props person, that's what you do. But then I, I pushed on to paint, uh, set painting and working with the designers and painting, and we have a volunteer list, and if any of you would like to volunteer, let me know. Uh, we work on Tuesdays and Thursday nights in the theater, usually painting, cleaning, waiting for paint to dry, what, you know, whatever. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank the, the foundation, the Greater Family Falls Foundation, for the contributions to the lighting that we have in the auditorium. Just as going right now. And it's, and it is, it's, it's fabulous, the, the lighting and uh, how you look at the show and see it. And the Church Basement Ladies is a wonderful musical comedy uh, taking place in northern Minnesota. <laughs> so I, I think Falls Patio, Patio Players is truly a contributing cultural event for Menominee Falls and that people need to realize that it's really good. <laughs> I mean, we, we have a lot of brave volunteers. Our volunteers are outstanding. So we do five shows a year, and our first one opens tomorrow, and it's next, this weekend and next. If you're not doing anything, put the remote down and come on over. <laughs> we have a lot of good laughs in this show, I'll tell you that. So I thank you all very much for coming. outstanding community leadership and civic involvement. This person should evidence a history of diverse volunteer activities and leadership roles that have contributed to the benefit and betterment of the Greater Menominee Falls area and its citizens. The recipient will be recognized for his or her, no, his, consistent record, record of community service and achievement. Previous award winners are Lou Teets, Ed Schlump, Larry Hebring, Ray and Marion Axel, Tim Newman, Rick Recklitz, Mary Stark, Jerry Mislang, and myself. Um, this year's Stop it. This year's Lifetime Achievement Award winner is Joe Greco. Very Read 
Thank you, Robin. This Lifetime Achievement Recognition is appropriate for Joe Greco as he has spent his lifetime doing just that, achieving. When Joe was in high school, he wanted to be a teacher. Unfortunately, he was discouraged from following that path. He eventually achieved that goal, but I will get to that. His teaching career was delayed slightly by an almost 40-year career in management and sales for the tool and then paper industry, retiring in 1997 from Stone Container. Joe and Sheila were married in 1958 and moved to Menominee Falls in 1964 when they built a home on Manchester Drive. Joe was always supported in his careers and in his civic life by his family team of Sheila, Joe Jr., and Pat, and Kim and Mike, now six grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren, as he moved through his career and public service. Throughout his professional career, Joe also maintained an active life of public service, beginning in 1981 when he was elected to the Village Board. In 1993, Joe was elected Village Board President. In the 80s and 90s, Menominee Falls did not have a harmonious relationship with the city of Milwaukee. There was a building moratorium in Menominee Falls we needed Lake Michigan water. There was a lengthy legal battle which pitted Milwaukee County communities against the outlying suburbs, fondly known as the sewer wars, and that was settled, but only after repeated refusals by the political leaders to collaborate and find a solution. But Joe didn't give up. Joe has that kind of personality. He doesn't give up, and he didn't. He was instrumental in bringing the parties together, and the dispute was settled in 1996 with the construction of the Deep Tunnel. And we certainly don't have a building moratorium now, do we? <laughs> in 1997, Joe retired. Days of leisure, right? But not for Joe. That's when he really got busy. Now back to that teaching goal. Joe fulfilled that dream and he became a substitute teacher at North Middle School and Menominee Falls High School. He had a powerful impact on kids. He respected them and they in turn respected Joe. He was known as grandpa to a few who didn't have grandfathers of their own. That kept Joe busy for 15 years. He also worked in the print shop for Community Memorial Hospital. He works out at the YMCA. Currently, he's a greeter at the Frederick Menominee Falls Clinic three days a week. He takes Thursdays off so he can do his own stuff. And on Fridays, Joe delivers Meals on Wheels. Joe, thank you for your service to others. What you have done in the past and continue to do for our village a village that you love and have worked hard to make sure it is a safe and thriving community. You demonstrate that it's not how old you get, it's how you get old. Thank you, Joe. sometime how she got that information. Very, very devious. She called Joe. They didn't know what to do, so he called Chicago. He called uh, my daughter and said, how can we get this information? So my dear daughter, my dear uh, granddaughter, had her daughter call me as though she was going to do a presentation <laughs> at the school. And her daughter pumped me, pumped me, gave me 
all this information that Karen read to you. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to my family. My son Joe, his wife Pat is back there, and Kim is my daughter, and her friend Mike McGuire. My, and my granddaughters, all three, are sitting here. And we have Marissa, who just returned from 12 weeks of business in Europe. Okay. <laughs> Madeline and Rose. And I don't know if I'm talking to you or not. This is, this is Rachel. I'm from Chicago. And then my grandchildren are back there also. Lucas and Mara, who are not sitting together tonight. <laughs> and we have um, Zach and uh, Kylie. She's sitting there. And I have my friends. I have uh, I have Dick Woodcraft and Chris sitting there. And I have Dave and Diane Burt. And they're my new ones. What I do have here are two friends, Ed and Darlene Moss, who we have been friends for a good 65 years. We've come a long way. It's been an interesting route. I, uh, I, I do want to thank Karen for nominating me and for the association to um, approve it. Um, but it's been an interesting career because much of what occurred was not what I did. It was somebody prompted me or did something. When I ran for village board, um, there was a public hearing. And I went to that public hearing and I asked the attorney a question. And the attorney said, I don't have to answer you, I don't work for you. And I went, oh. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that the village has another source of income other than taxes? So, and then another trustee turned his back on me. So I turned to my friend and I said, I'm gonna run. So I did. I ran and, and, and in my period as a trustee, we did some TIFs and we did the, the downtown bid district. And I'll let Joel and Muller explain to you what those two are because Joellen had to explain it to us. We didn't know what that was. You know, bid is when we, there, there's an area and you spell out, you make it the business improvement district. A TIF is when you take tax incremental financing, you take a plot of land that is destitute, you use those taxes to improve it, and it builds up, and it's, it's helping get an industrial base. Um, I'm very proud of the downtown and that we were part of, and I, very fortunate to have uh, had uh, a good manager, and uh, she couldn't be with us tonight. And we know uh, that she's she's in town, I think, and uh, she she did a great job. Um, we did build a li library, which we were very very proud of. Then. When I became village president, it became very difficult because sewer wars, we had to settle sewer wars. And I went to John Narquist, and John said, we have a big cloud over our head. And that was that we could not expand one block. And we, uh, we went ahead and worked negotiated, and it even went to the Supreme Court. And when we lost at the Supreme Court, we, I said, that's it. So I befriended two people, Tom Nardelli, who was the alderman of Budding Us, and Mary Claire Sarah, who was the mayor of uh, New Berlin. And um, we talked to the other people and said, it's done. We're, we, we lost the election, and it's. Uh, it, 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 and I'll tell you in a minute why we had the differences. The difference is when the main.
Maine, first I should say the state condemned all the sewage plants. So we had to join the deep tunnel, which went all the way down into Milwaukee. John Norquist appointed the trustees. So John Norquist controls and the MMSD. So we, we went, we, uh, we formed a group and said we have to settle this. And uh, I went down to see John. And I said, John, we're ready to settle. Not everyone was in agreement, even our own village board. You know, anything I did, I had to have approved by the village board, four votes. I did not have four votes. There were a couple of trustees that wanted to keep fighting. And um, so when John said, you know, it's, it's not public, but he said, Pabst is moving out of town. And he said, um, I think we can do a couple of things for you, because I know you've got a problem with the water. And we did. We the park and the plant, the, the water department superintendent told me that we were showing signs of cancer elements into the water. So John said, you guys settle sewer wars. And he said, I'll give you the water. So we handled sewer wars, and now we're all on, on Lake Michigan water. And the cancer element is lost. During that period, I was fortunate to be president of the League of Municipalities. That's the mayor's village presidents of the state. And while I was in Madison, I spent a lot of time in Madison, found, and, and the director of the association would, would, would clue me in that, that the, the administrators were not doing us any favors. So came back, we formed another group, brought all the mayors of southeastern Wisconsin together and we became a lobbying team. And I can tell you, we had some hell of a marshes on Madison. <laughs> John Norquist would be, because he was tall, and he would be there with a sign, and I'd be with a sign. And we, uh, we won a few, we lost a few. But, uh, but we were very proud. When my career came to an end, um, Keith Marty called me. And I don't know if you guys know Keith Marty, big smile. He said, I need your help. He said, we have a young man that just needs help, and we don't know whether to keep him here or to send him to another school. I said, I'm not qualified to do that. He said, oh, yes, you are. You're a grandfather. So I spent my eight weeks with the young man, and I was in the big meeting when they were deciding what to do. And he was shipped out to another school. But then my phone kept ringing. And uh, I was being assigned to other places. I didn't have a license. So I went down and I talked to Woos. And Woos said, well, you got to talk to so-and-so if you get a license. So I did get my license, I was legal, and I spent my 15 years, which was the most joyous years I've ever had. Um, got to know the superintendents. My daughter-in-law was a superintendent, and uh, her best friend was Jim, uh, um, Jim Shaw. And Jim, Jim was the guy who had approached me about his school, Shady Lane, needed to have a, a gym and uh, when I was in office. And uh, I said, well, seniors need a place to be because they're being bounced from pillar to post. So we did a referendum. He didn't want to do a referendum. He says, people don't support school referendums. So Jim and I campaigned all around. And then we won, so we got our community center. Jim got his expansion to Shady Lane. So Jim, Jim was a great guy and a good, good friend. So uh, I did that for 15 years. And I'm proud to say every penny I earned, I gave back. I've got more t-shirts, caps, 
hoodies, uh, and then the remainder of it I, I'm giving away in scholarships. Every year, piece by piece, and when that runs out, I'll probably still do something. Because I'll tell you guys, those kids are wonderful. I, I can't tell the story about the kids who call me grandpa, because I'll cry. So, thank you again, Karen, for the nomination. Thank you all. I forgot one friend who showed up was Tom Foley. Where's Tom? He must have left. There he is. There he is. He, he, he was in our old subdivision. So, thank you all for coming, and I am very pleased with this award. Thank you. Thank you for celebrating with us, the 2024 GMFF Award winners. We have chosen what we have determined are this year's most deserving volunteers. These people are truly the backbone of our village. They work quietly, often behind the scenes. They are steadfast and consistent. It printed on a new page, excuse me. In their willingness to give of themselves for the benefit of others, they are what makes Menominee Falls such a wonderful place to live. If you know someone who you would like to nominate for one of these awards for next year, please go to fallsfoundation.org, drop down Leadership Awards, and click Start Online Nomination. I'd like to introduce Senator Dan Canodal. He will present the citations to each award winner. All right, good evening. Thank you, and, and it's great to be here, and I want to thank the Foundation uh, Committee to, uh, that has extended the offer to have me come in and present these citations on behalf of the state of Wisconsin. Uh, I'm a long time uh, hometown guy from Nominee Falls, moved here uh, when family moved here when I was three in 1961, uh, and we have kept roots in Menominee Falls since that day. My youngest son uh, now lives in the family home in Fussville. So those that have been around that long know just what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about. So I always uh, love to be, remain connected to, to Menominee Falls, elected or not. And uh, appreciate just listening to the history and the knowledge that we gain coming here, listening to these people that have been part of our community for so long. It's just fascinating uh, to me. It's really just fascinating. And, and it makes Menominee Falls one of the uh, uh, community that it's, it's just the way to stay strong safe and secure and growing is they have these people connected to the number of service organizations that we have here. The community events, I can't keep up with them. All the uh, community events that go on and it's all you by your contributions and supporting these uh, organizations is what keeps it going. Uh, it's not state government, it's you. That, uh, that is keeping these things going, and it's these people that step forward and contribute to the community. So I thank all of you. I just want to bring you all up uh, together, uh, if you're uh, uh, able and willing, and we'll just do kind of a group uh, award. And I'll, I'll just read one to give you a flavor of uh, what uh, these are. They're a uh, citation uh, of the State Senate of the State of Wisconsin, and we buy these presents, whereas we name the individuals, and you've heard all their accolades, and 
Bios. Uh, and uh, we simply ended, therefore, the members of the Wisconsin Senate on the motion of State Senator Dan Canoto. Hereby commend that individual for his patriotism or whatever their uh, certain subject matter was on uh, their participation with the community. So that's what we have for you. If you're able, you want to come on up with well, the four recipients. I think that's the way we're going to do that. Finish up with saying, "On Wisconsin." <laughs> nope, down here. Stay up, Ray. We want to get a picture of the four of you with your citations. Thank you, Dan. I'm so proud to honor and recognize the efforts of such wonderful people, Ray, Janine, Bonnie, and Joe. Thank you for your extraordinary commitment to your friends and neighbors in our community. As we wrap up, I wanted to thank those who have made this event possible. First, thank you to our to Uptown, Robin's Nest, Nice Hardware, and Minoni Property for being this year's event sponsor. I'd also like to recognize our supporting sponsors, our Silver Level sponsors, Dennis and Kathy Pollard, the Newman team at Southwest, Shelley's Hallmark, r, &R Insurance, Pollard General Counsel, and Menominee Falls Baseball, and our Bronze Level sponsors, Senator Dan Canodal, Mathnasium of Menominee Falls, Pfeiffer's of Menominee Falls, Piggly Wiggly, Town Bank, Edward Jones, and Holy Cross Lutheran Church. Thank you guys for sponsoring this wonderful event. <laughs> Thanks to our fine auctioneer, Jerry Missling, Michelle Nye, our extraordinary photographer, Chris Forstum, and Robert Fryer, who've been live streaming us tonight on Falls Cable Access, and Davian's a longtime sponsor of the foundation for hosting us tonight. The silent, silent auction winners will be listed on a poster as you leave. And for those of you who have won, the, either the voice or silent auction, see Rick Cole. Where are you going to be, Rick? Out in the lobby? Out in the lobby. Uh, everyone know Rick? Stand up, Rick. You don't have to talk. Just stand up. <laughs> thanks, Rick. And last but certainly not least, a special thanks to our extraordinary dedicated committee who put this ovation on. Thousands and thousands, hundreds and hundreds of women hours went into this. Robin Mackey, Molly Paulus, Mary Jo McGraw, Sue Jeskowitz, Nicole Davis, Joellen Mulder, Sharon Minoni, and Kathy Oleg. Thank you, ladies. You did a great job. So as we close out, I'd like you guys to do me a favor. So on your table, there's envelopes. Everybody grab one of these for me, please. You got a little homework to do. We at the foundation need your support. And this has been an extraordinary evening and you probably haven't thought about what more you can do to help uh, our foundation, but put this in your pocket or your purse and take it home with you. Later, take a time to reflect and consider a donation to the foundation. For those of you that are regular contributors, please give it to a friend. As you know, a strong building foundation is not built just with large boulders. It requires stones of many sizes to fill in the cracks and build a solid bed. Likewise, our foundation is not sustained by just large donations. We need the many donations in all sizes to create a sustaining fund. Together, all the donations provide a strong endowment to allow us to support the community organizations that fill in the cracks to help many of our fellow citizens who need a hand up. Thank you for consideration and hopefully your future donation. So in closing, thanks to all of you for attending and supporting our foundation. 
Most importantly, thanks to our honorees, Ray, Janine, Bonnie, and Joe, for contributing your time and talents and continuing to make Menominee Falls the greatest place to work and live and to be an example to all of us. Good night, everybody. We hope you had a great evening.